It was about six weeks ago, just when the Christmas holiday started in South Africa, and the school closed, and it became quiet. And I went to bed that night, and early in the morning, God woke me up, and God spoke to me. God spoke to me in a very clear, pure word. He said to me, read the book of Samuel, the book of Kings, and the book of Chronicles. Three books, but you remember it is one Samuel and two Samuel, one Kings, two Kings, one Chronicles and two Chronicles. And as I still laid in bed, I thought, why? Why did God speak to me to read it? So I started praying. I said, Lord, why must I read those, those six chapters, those six books? I've read them before and I've preached out of them many times. No answer. So the next morning when I woke up and I went to my study, I took my Bible and I said, Lord, okay, show me. Why must I read it? And I opened it up on 1 Samuel chapter 1. And I started reading from there. Very sincere, not to get a message out of it to preach. But what is God saying? God has a special word for me. Because God will never speak to you without purpose. Yeah. Let me repeat that. When God speaks to you. There's a purpose. So now, when God spoke to me, I want to know what the purpose is. And I was praying, and there's no answer. I heard nothing. So I started to read. Came in the first book, the second book, the third book. The I went right through to the end. And when I finished in about four weeks, and the next morning... When I came in my study and I prayed, I said, Lord, now I'm finished with the six books. Why did I have to read them? And the word of God came. That's the faithfulness of God. You know, when you, God speaks to you, he, he wants obedience. When you are obedient to the voice of God... God will fulfill that which he spoke. But now why must God speak during halfway? He only speaks when you finished what God did. So when I've finished the six books, God spoke to me again. And he said to me, leadership. I said, leadership? And in my mind, I went back to the books that I read. And I said, Lord, leadership, that is true. There's a lot of leadership in that because if we look at the book of Samuel in 1 Samuel, it records the critical transition of Israel from the rule of God through the judges to his rule through the kings. Everything has to do with leaders. Samuel was the last judge. Samuel was also a, a judge and a prophet and a priest. A type of Christ. This transition goes through three stages from Eli... To Samuel, from Samuel to David, Saul is in between. It all has to do with leadership. So when we go to 2 Samuel, it records the highlights of David's reign. David, in spite of, in spite of his sins, he remains a man after the heart of God and he never allowed idolatry during his reign. That's why Israel became free from the enemy. Yeah. 
That's why when Samuel started to rule, the enemy respected Israel. Why? Because David prepared the people, the leader that was the right leader, to prepare the nation for God. That's my desire in this church. Let us prepare you for the future. He was a man after God's heart and never allowed idolatry to come. May we be strong to never allow any idolatry to come in our home, with our children, in our church. It's just as it was in Deuteronomy. Obedience brings blessing. Disobedience brings judgment. Okay, then I went to the book of Kings. King starts with Solomon. And we know the story of Solomon. He was the richest man and everybody from outside came closer and said, we want to see what you are doing. And he really built the temple. But when Solomon had a zeal for God that diminished in the end, in the latter years, as his pagan wives turned his heart away from worship in the temple of God, as a result, he leaves the division in the kingdom. Remember, 12 tribes, 10 tribes was divided. They didn't want to follow the, his son that became king. And they said no. And the two tribes, Judah and Benjamin in Jerusalem, they were separated. That is an irony of history, that the wisest man acts as a fool in his old age. People, when we get old, don't act as a fool. Then in the second Kings, we read the 19 consecutive evil kings rule in Israel in the 10 tribes. I studied it and it was only one king that did not evil in the sight of the Lord and God allowed the uh, Assyrians to come and they took them captivity and that was the end of the ten tribes of Israel. No more. But the two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, most of them, and they had 20 kings after Solomon, they were, most of them did the right thing. That's why God blessed them. But at the end, however, sin outweighed righteousness and Judah is marched out to Babylon in captivity. And that captivity was for 70 years. That means God said to them, I will bring you back after 70 years. And King Cyrus brought them back. He said, everyone that wants to go back, he has money to rebuild the house of God. Because God spoke to me to rebuild the house of God. So listen to me, the spiritual climate of a nation every nation, this nation too, determines its political and economic conditions. That's why we need to pray for our nation. May our nation become a Christian nation. And let me tell you something, when our nation is a Christian nation, God will pour out his blessings upon all of us. But it starts with the individual person and it starts with us. And that is why I love this church because I believe that God is going to use this church for many things. You said to me, Pastor Jan, is this church perfect? No. Why not? Because I am not perfect. But I love God. And we are going to go and see great things happening in the future because we live in the end time and many prophecies need to come to fulfillment. Amen. Then when we go to the book of Chronicles, it teaches repeatedly what whenever God's people forsake him, he withdraw his blessing. But trust in him and in obedience to the Lord brings Victory. This is what is in the six books. And you can check it and see what God is saying by his spirit. And I want to be very sensitive. 
especially when we go out or when we have a conference and other churches are coming and join together, I really believe that God is going to use this church for great things. But we need you. We need you to pray. We need you to stand together. We need you to become strong. And let me tell you something. In a difficult time in South Africa, it will not come to you because God is with you. And God said, I will bless my people. And God can bless you. It doesn't matter what the political situation is. Serve God. And he will open up the door. Serve God. And he will be always with you. So when we look at leadership, there are different leaders for different areas. We do have spiritual leaders. Yes. We do have political leaders. We have business leaders, administrative leaders, within the workplace there's leaders. There's all over leaders. But today I want to ask, what about the church? If we have the wrong leaders in the church, God will not move. Amen. And that is why it's so wonderful for us to travel around to different churches and see some churches are very strong. My wife preached in Pastor Shailen's church, which is the house of David. And Cl Clarissa sits here. That's her father. He's a strong church, but the other churches that we went, some of them are not so strong. That's why the compassion comes in our heart. Church leaders needs God more than ever before. Church leaders needs to be strengthened by the Spirit of God so that they can lead their leaders. So most of the history of Israel was in those six books. And all is written down for your learning. Because every time when they did good things, the Lord's blessing was upon them. But when they did wrong things, the judgment came upon them. And I believe it's God does not change. If we do the wrong thing in this church and I bring false gods, false things here, idols, we will fall. But I want to make sure as I stand before the Lord, help this church. And this church is not the building, it's not those seats, it is you. We want to be strong in the name of the Lord so that we, our church, can be an example to many other churches in the nation. So when we look at the history of Israel, we see that when they had good leaders or good judges or good kings who trusted in God, everything was well. They prospered. The enemy could not come in. But when the leaders moved God out and they start serving idols, everything went wrong. When you serve God, you can expect the blessings. But when you don't serve God, the devil enters in and many people suffer. Let me show you in the Bible, because you said, I've said all these things and I haven't even turned to the Bible. But I'm going to turn to the Bible now. Let me show you what the Lord showed me during the six, uh, in the last six weeks concerning leadership. And I'm just going to give you some examples so that we can see what's happening all over the world. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 3, it read that Elkanah was a man of God who went to Shiloh every year to bring a sacrifice. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of God in Shiloh. Also the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. So at that time in Shiloh, 
where the main area is where God moves from was Eli as the priest, and he was still a judge. But now he's getting old, and his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, need to stand in his shoes to do the work. But look what happened in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. Now tell me, how does that work? They were preachers, priests in the tabernacle. They stood before the Ark of the Covenant. They ministered to the people the word of God. They were supposed to give the word that God gives them to the people. But look what said it. They did not know the Lord. Do you think there are preachers on platforms in churches today that are preaching a wonderful service? Yeah. Yet, they don't know the Lord? Yeah. Oh, God help us. Do you see why the scripture says, when I come to shake the world, I will first shake the church? Amen. Because the church is God's house. And God will shake everything out of this church that is not of him. God will shake everything out of me that is not from him. But so also with you. They did not know the Lord. This was the condition of the spiritual leadership in Israel at those days. What is the spiritual leadership? condition of all our churches worldwide I don't want to think of that 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 22 to 24 it says this now Eli was very old and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel and how they lay with the woman who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the meeting. The priest were committing idolatry. So he said to them, why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all the people. No, my sons, for it is not good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people transgress. I feel if a father sees children doing wrong, he needs to do something about it. When your sons are doing something wrong, you can't just go to them and talk to them and say, hey, this is very bad that you're doing. You need to do more. Amen. Eli did not brought his, his children, his sons, in line. So that's why this woman was there, Hannah, and she prayed bitterly to God because she was barren. And she says, give me a son and I will give him to you. And God heard her words. And she had a son and the son's name was Samuel. And she brought Samuel when he was old enough to the tabernacle to where Eli was. And he started to serve Eli at that time. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. Then the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And look here, he says, And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. I pray, Lord God, that this church will not have a lack of the word of God. I pray, Lord God, that the people in this church will hear the truth of the word of God, that there will be widespread revelation, that God will speak to us, and that we will do what is right in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now, in verse 7 of the same chapter, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. So Samuel was with Eli, Hophni and Phinehas were the priest in the house. Samuel came in now, and he did not yet 
know the Lord. But then God came and spoke to him and he said, Samuel, Samuel. He jumped up and he went to Eli. He thought it was Eli. And this happened for three times. Then Eli said, wait a minute, that's something else. It is God that is calling to you. And when it happens again, tell him, here I am, Lord. And it happens that the fourth time when the Lord spoke, that he said, here I am. And God spoke to him. We all have to learn to hear the voice of God. Now let's look at the result when leadership weakens in 1 Samuel chapter 4 and verse 1 to 11. And I'll read it slowly so that you can hear and understand. The word of of Samuel came to Israel. Remember, he's not in charge. Eli is still in charge. And Hophni and Phinehas, his two sons, are the priests in the tabernacles. Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines and encamped beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines encamped in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in battle array against Israel, and when they joined battle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. What happened? God pulled his hand back. Because the priests, the leaders, are not doing the right thing. So what happened? The Philistines came and killed 4,000 people of soldiers that are, they are not guilty, but they died. Why? Because of leadership. So listen what the people did. And when the people had come into the camp, the elders of the Israel said, why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Why did the Lord defeat us? In other words, God is now guilty. Is it not happening in our days when something negative happens in your life that you say, why did God allow this to happen? It happens. It happened here. It happens today. Now what they're saying, let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Shiloh to us, that when it comes amongst us, it may save us from the hand of the enemies. You think that the Ark of the Covenant can save you? God can save you. The Ark of the Covenant is an instrument of something that God said, make it a box with gold on the inside and on the outside with the cherubims on top and the mercy seat on top and inside the tables of the law, Moses or Aaron's rod that budded and also a bowl of manna that did not get old for years and years and years. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the cherubims, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant. So they allowed the Ark of the Covenant to go out to the battlefield. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth shook. In other words, the eyes of Israel is not on God, it's on the Ark. Don't put your eyes on this church. You hear what I'm saying? Put your eyes on the God of this church. Put your eyes on the God of the ark. But now they said, no, it's the ark. So when the Philistines heard that noise and the shout, they said, what does the sound of the great shout in the camp of the Hebrews mean? Then they understood that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. So the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into the camp. No, God did not come into the camp. It was the ark of the covenant that came into the camp. And they said, woe to us, for such a thing has never happened before. Woe to us, who will deliver us from a hand of this mighty God? So the enemy knows that the God that we serve is mighty. These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. 
Be strong and conduct yourself like men, you Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews as they have been to you. So the he Hebrews are servants to the Philistines. Don't let it be turned around. Conduct yourself like men and fight. So the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated and every man fled to his tent. There was a very great slaughter and there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. Huh? First 4,000, now 30,000 foot soldiers fell. Why? Because of leadership. The leaders did not do what God told them. The leaders could not hear the voice of God. The leaders could not lead the people in the way they should go. 30,000 people died. Then in verse 11, also the ark of God was captured and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. When I say that the shaking of God will start with the house of God, don't be surprised if many people will just collapse or they just stop serving the Lord in a church, hand the church over to somebody else because they don't know God. Amen. So let's go a little bit further. Hophni and Phineas died. When Hophni and Phineas died, they came and they reported it to Eli, and he was sitting there in his chair, and they said, Hophni and Phineas, your two sons has died. He says, Oh, that's terrible. But when they said to him, The Ark of the Covenant is being taken, he fell backwards and he broke his neck and he died. So suddenly in one day, the three that ruled Israel spiritually died. And now in chapter 7, 1 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 3 to 6. Now Samuel needs to rule. He said in verse, uh, verse 3, then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all of your heart, then put away all the foreign gods and the asteroids from among you and prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. That is for you today also. If we do what Samuel said the people needs to do, take all the gods that they serve, put them away, then... God will deliver you from the hands of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the Baals, the Asterisks, and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water, and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day and said, and we are going to fast this weekend. And said, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. So they really submitted their lives to God. And then in verse 7, we see the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah, and the Lord of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So now that Samuel rules, and Samuel brings the people back to God, and Samuel makes sacrifices for the sin of the people, and Samuel takes all the false gods out, and he destroys them. Now God's heart is open to the nation. Now the Philistines come again against them, and they want to take them, and they cry out to God. And they say, Samuel, pray, because we are afraid. The Philistines are there back again. And look in, 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 uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 1. Now it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over him. Before that, when, when they called to God, the people died. There was, there was so many people that died 
because when the, gov the governmental authority on, upon, upon Samuel kept the Philistines out, and he kept the Philistines out for 40 years. Good leadership will keep the devil out. Amen. For 40 years, he kept them out. So Samuel did not like that, and he took it to God. Forgetting that God had chosen them to be holy and separated. That is what God wants from you. You are a holy people. You need to be separated unto God. Wherever you go, you must remember that God is with you. So, in 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 7, because in verse 1 and in 8, let me just go to 8, it came to pass when Samuel was old and and he made his sons judges over Israel, verse 3. But his sons did not walk in the ways of, of Samuel. They turned aside after dishonest gain, took bribes and perverted justice. Now what happens if the people see that the leadership is weak? They don't want to be under the leadership. Look, then all the elders of Israel gathered together at Samuel, uh, to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, look, you are old. Your leadership was good, Samuel, but you are now old. And your sons do not walk in your ways. In other words, we haven't got any faith in your sons. They don't walk in your ways. Now make for us a king to judge us like all the nations. That's why they asked a king. That's why the world sit with leaders that should not have been like this. God's people should have been ruled by priests, by prophets, by judges. That's not so. So it, he was very worried about it. And in verse 7, and the Lord said to Samuel, heat to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should re not reign over them. So give them a king. And Samuel anointed Saul as the first king. That is what will happen if you reject God. He rejects them. And when God rejects them, all the curses came upon them. So the hands of Israel over, uh, is now coming under a king away from a judge. That's what they wanted. What was the result? Let me show you what the result is. 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 11. God spoke to Samuel and he said, This will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen, and some will run before his chariots. So the king will take your children. He will appoint captains over the thousand and captains over the over fifties and will set them to plow his ground, not your ground, his ground, and reap his harvest and make and some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perf perfumers, cooks, and bakers. And he will take the best of your field, your vineyard, and your olive groves, and give them to his servants. He will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage, that's taxes, and give it to the officers and servants. And he will take your men servants and maid servants and your finest young men and your donkeys and put them to his work. And he will take a tenth of your sheep and you will be his servants. Is that not what happens today? Every government is charging taxes on everything. Personal tax. Tax on what you buy. Every time when you go to a shop, Whatever you do, tax, 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 tax. Amen. God warned them. That's what happens when you choose a king. Yeah. That's why, church, we should pray that God will help us to have kings, rulers, 
was like David with the prophet next to him. And the prophet heard the voice of God. David didn't do anything to go to war without first praying to God and asking God to help. And every time David was successful, that needs to happen in our life today. That's an example of what the king will do. So after Samuel, after Saul, after David, after Saul, Solomon, but Solomon in his latest days lapsed into the idolatry and the result was that upon his death, the kingdom was divided. The two tribes of Judah and Benjamin in Jerusalem under Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, to reign over Judah. Now, what did he do? Let me show you. 1 Kings chapter 12. 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 4 right through to verse 11. Rehoboam, who became now king, came to the people and he said, the people said, your father made your yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the burdensome service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us and we will serve you. So he said to them, depart for three days. And he said, I will, I will listen. And we went to the elders. And the elders said to him in verse 7, he says, If you will be a servant to this people today and serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. Verse 8, but he rejected the counsel which the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him, and he said to them, what counsel do you give? Huh? How should we answer the people who have spoken to us that said, lighten the yoke which your father put on us? And here they said, the young men said to them, thus you should speak to the people who have spoken to you, saying, your father made the yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, my little fingers shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas your, my father laid a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. Amen. That's leadership. You see how important leadership is? It's in the natural, it's in the spiritual, all over. We must really pray that God will help us with leadership. And this is what God said in the word of God. When an ungodly leader or king will lead, the people suffer. And we can see how the people suffered. But now look at some of the prophetic words that came in the book of Chronicles. Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14 says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. Does South Africa need healing? Yes. When? If my people, not the people in the world, not the people in South Africa, the church, my people. If you and I will pray, and that's what we need to pray, I will heal the land. In Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 2, another prophet, he said, The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Here's another one. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20. <clears throat> and I said, And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and your inhabitants of the Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in the prophets, and you shall prosper. What is he saying? Believe in the Lord. I want you to believe in the Lord. When you believe in the Lord, you shall prosper. Amen. That has nothing to do with the economy 
over the climate in the country about finances. If you believe in the Lord your God, you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those that would sing to the Lord and who should praise the Lord, beauty in his holiness. And they went out before the army and they were saying, listen to this, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. So now the soldiers went to the army, to the battlefield, singing, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise the Lord and to, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, the people of Moab and Mount Seir who had come against Judah and they were defeated. Many people from three different countries came against them. They were defeated while the people were singing and not doing a thing. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of the Mount Seir and utterly killed and destroyed them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitudes and there they were all dead. Dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one has escaped and Israel did do nothing. God did it. You believe that can happen again? If we believe in God and our church is growing stronger and stronger, the very same thing can happen and we can see things happening in our time because God is returning. God is coming. God is going to bring his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus is the king. Amen. King of all kings. So praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Okay, let me take you to the last one. He was a 16th king of Judah. Second Chronicles chapter 34. Second Chronicles chapter 34 was 1 to 5. Josiah. Listen to this. He is the 16th king of Judah, the two tribes. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. Eight years, only eight years. And he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. Now look what, what his desire was. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left hand. A young boy, eight years old. For in the eighth year, now he's 16 years old in his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father, David. Now, his father, David, he lived maybe 200 years earlier because it's 16 key kings, some Ruled 40 years, some 31 years, some three years. And if you count it all together, it can be easily 200 years. But he was seeking what his spiritual father, David, and the, tw and the tw tw 12th year, now he's 20, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the same thing that David did. The wooden images, the carved images, and the molded images, they broke them down the altars of Baals in his presence and the incense altars which were above them and cut them down and the wooden images and the carved images and the molded images he broke in pieces and made dust out of them. And then he scattered them on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. Also he burnt the bones of the priest on the altar and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. What a wonderful testimony of such a young man, a leader that wanted God to bless the nation and the country. And that's what he prayed for. We give God the glory and that is what we want to see with the leaders. Oh God, help our leaders. But Lord, start with the spiritual leaders. We need to see the spiritual leaders coming stronger and stronger. 
That's why I am just surrendering myself as we sung that song this morning. I surrender all. I surrender all. I mean that. That's what we need to do. I have great hope for the future. I pray that at my age that God will keep me healthy because I want to see what God is going to do. I'm interested and I want to go out to different churches and help them, give them the word of the Lord. May God help our spiritual leaders. May God help our leaders that are leading our country, that they will hear from God. Because at the moment, the United Nations, the World Health Organizations, and all those rich people are coming together and they make laws which is not in line with God's word. But God is going to raise up the body of Christ, the church. And we will go forward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will see victory for our nation and our country. In Jesus' name, give him a sacrifice. Yes. Father, I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I pray, O oh God, lead your people. And as you have shown me, Lord God, when you spoke to me so clearly, when I finished reading the book, you said leadership, and I see, look at the leaders and I say, yes, we need to pray for our leaders. Help our leaders, Lord. Help our leaders. We pray, help us as leaders in fountain of life. Take away what is not from you. We don't want to follow a pattern. We want to follow the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Lord, help us to understand and to do what is right in your eyes. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.